and welcome to this video. Today we will be painting some spirit hosts. I have uh, been requested to show how I paint mine. I paint them in a very bright and powerful green uh, glow, as you will see at the end of the video, or if you've already seen them on my Instagram channel. But uh, today we will give these a try. These are just some secondhand spirit hosts that I have uh, been, been donated since I haven't paid anything for them. So today we will try and paint one of these. And the first thing I have done is just prime them. I prime with an, air, with an airbrush, but you can prime with whatever you want. It's just a simple white from Army Painter. So nothing special there. So the first thing we will be doing is giving them a coat of mood green. I have two different variants here. I have the airbrush version, the ones uh, I will be using or have used, and the normal citadel layering paint. You can use either. The color is the same and the result will be more or less the same. And with the help of a uh, little movie magic, I've already painted one. Because this process is not very interesting, it's just putting green on top of the primer. So the next thing we will be doing is putting on another citadel color, hex wraith flame. And I will be putting all these colors in the, in the description of the videos, so you can always find them there. This is a simple technical paint from, from, uh, from Games Workshop. It reminds me a lot about uh, a wash and will pool in the recesses exactly where we want it to pool. But you should be aware that when you paint and you put on too much, I like putting on a lot. You can see, if you, you can hardly see it because it's so bright, but you can see it's pulling in the recess. Be careful that it doesn't pull too much. So when you paint the miniature, be sure to remove any serious pooling that you do not want when it's dry. Because this is acrylic paint and once it's dry, it's very hard to remove. So now we just simply just cover the entire miniature and let the paint do its job. This is a fairly easy, easy way because we don't have to be very careful since it's going over basically the entire model except the base of course. Again, this is not a very interesting process. So, I will just, you can see how bright it is in the video. You can hardly, you can hardly film it. But I will finish this and uh, get back to you. There's no point really for you seeing this since it's not very interesting. So I'll be right back with the finished model, uh, well, at least with the, with the dried model from the Hicks Rain Flame. So see you then. Welcome back. Now you can see the Hicks Rain Flame is dry, but the camera is having even more trouble capturing this absolutely radioactive, radioactive green. Let's see if we can see some of it. You can see and capture some of the the highlights and, and shadows of the miniature. So let's get going. Now we will be doing some of the highlights. The first thing we will be doing is using Citadel's Gorse Blaster Green. You can use any green that you want as long as it's, it's bright enough and uh, light enough to be a highlight. And then we will finish with an uh, off-white, also a citadel color in this, in this uh, instance, a Corex white. I prefer not using an entirely white because it will create too much contrast. But let's get going. You could use a standard dry brushing from Citadel or whatever other company you, you use. 
but I find that the that the bristles is a bit too stiff and will create some unwanted effects on the miniature. I will instead be using a much softer brush. This is just a very cheap makeup brush. You could probably buy the ones from Artisopus. They are extremely good. But I will just be using these cheap brushes. So let's just see what we can do. And then when you're dry brushing, it's this kind of, at least with this kind of technique, it is important that you take a look at your miniature and actually see where the highlights will be going and what direction they're moving. On this miniature, they're moving sort of in a fluid motion, like this on the miniature, and like this. And you should be dry brushing this way. So you only capture the, the highlighted area and not the recess. Because if you do like this, you will be having a tendency to, to hit the, the recess areas as well. And that would give a, a result that I at least do not like. I don't deny that some people might like that, but, but I don't. So let's just put some paint in the brush. There we go. You can see. And then just let's start dry brushing. Again, just don't push too hard on the miniature because we only want the want it as a highlight. And again, try to do it in the direction that the miniature is, is sculpted. So we only hit the areas that we do want. And again, then we will see if the camera can actually capture some of it. You can see some of the highlights starting to show through on the head. Then just carefully go through the entire miniature. I don't suppose there's much point in showing you this, so I will just finish it and come back when we are going to move on to the to the off-white. So see you back in a few seconds. There we go, now we're back. I finished dry brushing the gauze plaster green on it. And again, it's again very bright. You can see it in the subtle colors, but we will take some better lighted pictures when we're done, so we can really tell the difference. So for the next step, again we will just be using the Corex White, and this time we will only be dry brushing the highest recesses of the miniature, because we don't want to cover all the gauze we just put on. So we will just be hitting things like the face. This is uh, very fast. The blade. Those tentacles. And their hands. You can do as much or as little as you want. You could also do a more traditional approach with a more traditional edge highlighting that will grant a, a, a cleaner result I suppose because it will give you a lot more control but it will also take you a lot longer to actually finish your miniatures and even though the result is better I will probably save this technique to to the more important miniatures of your army and not the rank and file troops so if you wanted to do it on, on a special character or your commander or something a dragon it could be could be worth spending the extra amount of time Now we go, let's try to see if we can capture it. 
Again, it is uh, hard to see. You can see the faces are, are clear now. A little on the blades, and again, the camera is having a bit of hard time really distinguishing the nuances in this extremely powerful green. But again, as I said, I will take some still pictures with better lighting so we can actually see the results. I'll just finish up the base, nothing fancy, just giving in a little paint, highlights, and uh, paint the rim of the base, and then we'll, we will be done. I will thank you for watching the video, hopefully you have learned something, or at least gotten some, some tips for painting. If you liked the video, feel free to, to like it, if you want to leave a comment, I would appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel, then like it and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you will get new videos. Other than that, I will see you either in the next video or on Instagram. Bye bye for now.